thought this man by Jody Mall Pass was bad. And it is. It's a, at a, an abhorrent pile of monkey feces. But I think dangerous magic may be worse. Maybe. No, we'll say it's tied. Definitely tied. Dangerous Magic was written by Jane Ann Krentz back when she was known as Stephanie James. And it's my fault that this happened, like reading it, obviously. But I was at the thrift store looking at books and I didn't read the entire synopsis on the back. And I thought this was one of those like the man abuses the woman and she gets revenge kind of books. And I was actually kind of excited for it until I read the last half of the synopsis after I bought it. The trap was set. She would manipulate him into falling in love with her, and when he was on his knees begging for her to marry him, she would shoot him down for the dirty dog that he was. But what she didn't count on was falling in love herself. This book is about a man named Wade Taggart. <laughs> Taggart. <laughs> Who sexually abuses Alyssa and then is rewarded with marriage. And in a way, this man by Jody Mallpass is kind of worse because Jesse does do some decent things for Ava. He buys her flowers and gifts. I can't think of a single moment that Wade Taggart was even nice to Alyssa in this book. I'm not kidding, this entire book is him framing her, saying that, oh, you slept away to the top, threatening her job security, making her dependent upon him, and then just abusing her, threatening to beat her, treating her like complete and utter garbage. I'm not kidding, guys. This book was actually kind of nauseating to read. And I understand people like the dominant male. They like a man that takes charge. And the demographic that reads this kind of bullshit likes that. But here's the thing. I like romance. I like a sexy dominant male. But there's a very thin thin line between sexy and dominant and abusive and a lot of authors don't understand that and they think oh it's perfectly fine for a man to threaten to beat a woman it's perfectly fine for him to demand she never talk to any other male but him it's perfectly fine for him to make her completely dependent upon him and force kisses on her and you know put his hands on her and make it to where her job security is at stake because he wants her to sleep with him that's fine that's you know that's not something that would get someone arrested in real life right when people read books they read books because they want to experience something in fiction form that they not they don't necessarily want to deal with in real life and again i understand that but again i've said again so many times already fine line very angel hair thin fine line I'm going to read some of the some of the lines in this book. Hang on. Oh, shit. The cover just the glue just cracked on this book. Oh no. I know you suck ass dangerous magic, but that doesn't mean I want you to fall apart. I'm not like Wade. I don't want to hurt you. All right, so here's some of the these fantastic lines. <clears throat> no, he denied in a deep blight blighting tones. He denied in deep, blighting tones. Yeah, this book is written to shit, by the way, just as a heads up. No, he said in a deep, blighting tone. It's not. I'm going to get what I want to, even though I'm going to have to reach out and take it for myself instead of having you give it to me. I want you, Alyssa, he stated categorically. Categorically. Okay. Categorically. Category. Like, a category of something categorically what does that have to do with it? is he saying that he stated it matter of factly stated it as planned categorically Krentz were you fucking high when you wrote this I'm guessing <clears throat> and that means I've got to control you make you want me or I'll find my fingers very badly burned won't I you expect me to steer clear of other men while you're interested in me? She clarified with great civility, even as her blood pounded in response to the challenge. She watched him through her lashes as he examined her in return. There was a tightening of the electrical charge between them. 
Most definitely, he confirmed, taking a thoughtful sip of his wine, his eyes never leaving her. I told you on Friday that while I'm circling in your orbit, I will be the only one in your inner circle. His mouth twitched, as if a sudden thought had just struck him. This is probably a new experience for you, isn't it? Having a man tell you that you're no longer free to exercise your spells on other men. On other males, pardon. And uh, it probably is new to have a man come up to her and say, Oh, uh, your free will is completely forfeit because I want to stick my penis in you. And here's the thing that really gets me with this book is Krentz tries to play it up, not that this guy's abusive, but that he's just a challenging person and she needs to rise to the challenge to meet him head on. No, the moment your partner becomes such a challenge that you have to change yourself and you have to constantly feel tired in, in order to deal with them, it's over at that point. Like for instance, it says, a self-sufficient male was probably a challenge for any woman. Yeah, self-sufficient. He's only self-sufficient. That's just what all self-sufficient men do. They, they force a woman to do whatever she doesn't want to do, and then he tries to force marriage on her because she doesn't have a choice. Because again, he wants to, he wants to get some pussy. Gotta stick that dick in there. Chase me all over town? Alyssa scoffed. Is that what you would have done? Most assuredly. And the longer I was forced to chase, the more upset I would have been. Which is why I congratulated you on being wise enough to be ready this evening. The look in his eyes was pure, satisfied hunter. It doesn't bother you that I'm going out with you under duress. He looked surprised. Should it? Some men might be a little bothered by the fact that they had to ensure a date with threats, she growled. Some men, he repeated, nodding his dark head thoughtfully. But not me. And as I said... He keeps holding her job over her head. He, he accuses her of sleeping around with another person to get the promotion that she got. And he's basically like, okay, here's the deal. If you don't fuck me or you don't, you know, stay with me, I'm going to fire you. You aren't going to have your job. But if you do as I say, I'll also throw a bit of a promotion in there for you too. As is indicative of just who he is as a person. Page 116. I do demand a bit more of someone when he or she is being considered for a promotion. He or she, does, does that mean he wouldn't mind a dude sucking him off? You go that way there, uh, Wade? Just, uh, hell. Want some ass, want some pussy? You'll stick your dick in anything, won't you? Page 132. I seem to recall telling you that I wouldn't tolerate other men in your life while I was in it. And then I went on to say you needed a lesson in developing some respect for the male of the species. You may recall that incident. It only took place Sunday, he chided grimly. Are you threatening me? But not with your job, he told her evenly. By the way, this is really starting to piss me off. He chided grimly. He told her evenly. You don't have to slap an adverb at the end of every sentence. Just, you don't have to. It's literally, you could take those out. He chided. He told her. There is no need for that. What then? She snapped, irritated but curious in spite of herself. You'll have tonight to worry about that, he said with great gentleness, and tomorrow too. I'll be home sometime tomorrow evening. I hope you'll have the courage to be in your apartment when I get there. If you're tempted to spend the evening elsewhere in order to avoid me, you might take into consideration the fact that I'll be twice as annoyed with you if I have to track you down. It basically was a threat. You better not try and hide from me, because <laughs> you'll get in some deep shit if I find you. And then later on in the page, why don't you fix dinner for me? and see if that does the trick. I'll be there around seven. At one point, he tries to initiate sex, and she gets pissed, and he says, you think that if we'd finished what we started here tonight, you wouldn't be eating out of my hand by morning. And my absolute favorite part of this entire book, just mm, delicious, in so many ways. And so, they get into a fight over a painting, right? And he decides, you know what? Bitch natter threatening her, it's just not going to work. So, <clears throat> I'm going to beat you, Alyssa Sheldon. Another new experience for you, I'll bet. I stake a lot of money on the idea that no one's ever even thought of doing such a thing to sweet, charming Alyssa. Wade, Alyssa's mouth fell open in utter shock. You wouldn't dare. There you go again, mixing me up with the other men in your life who fit so easily around your little finger, he mocked, giving her a slight but violent shake. Perhaps when I'm finished, 
you'll be able to remember which one I am. Wade, please don't. Alyssa resorted to primitive, primitive feminine instinct. Enraged males were to be placated, appeased. It was the weaker female's only defense when matters had gone this far. Weaker female. It was the weaker female's only defense when matters had gone this far. All right, so this line is implying one of two things. Either Alyssa is, quote, a weaker female for daring to almost be beaten by a man. How dare she almost be violated physically? Like, how dare she? Or, as a female, she is just weaker. And I think now is a really good time to talk about Alyssa as a character. Alyssa is what I like to call the passive-aggressive female. In earlier times, the woman was just kind of a wet paper towel of a person. She'd bow her heads to a man's demands. And nowadays, obviously, that isn't something that is encouraged. It's actually very frowned upon. Whenever you have characters like Bella or Anastasia Steele, there is usually an outcry of some kind against those characters because of how weak and just kind of pathetic they are as a female lead. However, there are a lot of authors, much like Jane Ann Krentz, I am noticing here, that still wants the woman to be dominated by the male, but at the same time doesn't want her being completely weak. So what she'll do is she'll have the female complain about how she's being treated, but then she never does what a normal woman logically would do, like leave or go to the police. And this isn't me shitting on women who have been in abusive relationships. Because I understand getting out of an abusive relationship takes courage and it it's scary, especially if you have nowhere to go and you don't have any way of defending yourself or supporting yourself, especially if you have children. So I'm not shitting on domestic abuse victims. I'm shitting on a story where the woman is not being necessarily controlled by the man. She's just being stupid. The author can't have her use, you know, normal logic outside of her. She's not being controlled by the man. She's just dumb. She won't leave. She won't call the police. She just bitches at him. And then instead of leaving town or saying, you know what, fuck your job. I don't need it. And getting a restraining order or anything like that. She just doesn't do anything. She has means of leaving. She has means of protecting herself and going somewhere else, regardless of how much money he has and regardless of his threats that he can find her. And yet, she just bows her head to him. And then at the end, out of nowhere, she's like, I love you. And I'm not kidding. When she said, I've fallen in love with you, I fucking threw the book. I did. I threw it. I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. He hasn't done a single nice thing to her. Those lines I just read you, that's littered throughout the book of him threatening to beat her, threatening to abuse her, trying to force sex on her, uh, trying to, you know, threatening her with poverty and the chances of losing her job. This is a guy who abuses a woman with sexual harassment and financial duress and forceful threats of violence. And he is rewarded in the end with her saying, I'll marry you, I love you. And what really doesn't help is that there are male characters in this book, one of which she's been friends with for years, that would be a much better person for her to be with, who is nice and respectful and cares for her. But no, he's not the dominant cunt waffle that's been trying to rape her and force himself on her for the entirety of the book. So obviously, we can't have that. She's, she's got to be with the cunt. She's got to be with, with the dude that thinks with the head between his legs instead of the head on his shoulders. It's genuinely just, guys, wow. Jane Ann Krentz, wow. I understand people like dominant males in literature, but I can't stand the passive aggressive female lead. That's like one of the, I hate, I hate that. I can't even talk, I'm so mad. <laughs> I hate it. This book is garbage. It is a waste of paper. It is a waste of trees. And I will never get back the brain cells that I lost reading it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give Dangerous Magic a zero. It is currently tied with This Man by Jody Malpass as the worst fucking thing I have read this year. And I'm happy I bought it at a thrift store. So that means Jane Ann Krentz won't be getting any of that 10 cents that I spent on it. I'm nothing against her personally, but uh, if this is how she writes all the time, just no. Just no.